welcome to vid documenting some world tour training. So I was um, rolling up Norton Summer as you do, just warming up, I'm ready to do some intervals. And I heard some lads chatting behind me, and I was like, they can only be world tour riders. Because I was, you know, I was doing like 200, 220, and they were talking like they were just like putting along, like they were just sort of doing nothing. So I was like, right, time to chat the GoPro one, and um, time to time to go chase them down. So I was, I was almost going to turn back because I thought my power meter had broken. And, um, so I was like, I might just follow them for a bit and then have to go home to get my power meter up. Um, get, get it some batteries. Um, but alas, it did not. So here we go, a bit of chasing. At first I was a bit like, meh, not sure how close I want to get. Because it was Cohen de Court and um, Michael Valgren. Good lads. They were just having a nice combo, so I thought it would be a bit weird if I just like, come up behind them or whatever. But now they seem like good blokes. Had a little bit of combo here or there, but they were... They were going so easy. Like you can see the wattage. So I'm 60 kilos, just to put it in perspective. But I'd say the power they're doing is probably only a slightly bit higher, not not too much higher. But this for them is just like easy as like they're not even trying. <laughs> like they could they they do this like for like five days. They could do this for five days for like four weeks and just wouldn't really tire them out. Like this is just like zone one for them. And they're just chilling out. I mean they still have pretty good pedaling technique. Um, but you can see on the left, so Kona Quartz bike, he's got disc brakes on. And the Trek Segafredo thing, the interesting thing this year is that they have to, have to wear high-vis in training. And red, which is what they wear in races, is only for races. And they also have to have the rear light on. Um, I'm not sure if you can see Michael Valgren's bike, but I don't think it's an Argon bike. Because I looked on his Strava and he said that when he got here that his top tube had broken. And that doesn't really look like... It. It might be an Argon bike, but I don't think it's his team issue one because his team issue one has a little bit of blue on it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like he's he's on a different bike. I'm not sure what bike it was. I don't really get up to see. Um, it's it's very interesting. I can't really see. Um, the footage, I don't know. I didn't really get any great footage of his bike necessarily. Um, but you can see it, it definitely doesn't look like the Astana sort of blue, blue bike um, at all. Which is which is odd. I mean, I guess it's not that odd because his bike got smashed when he um when he flew, um when he flew to Adelaide. Uh, he, I know Michael valgren has been here. Um, I think for, for like five six days now or something. So he's um must he loves it here. I think quite good training compared to Denmark. I think he's from. Uh, so yeah, he was get get without went out with Cone de Court for about five hours. That's what that Strava looked like. Just he didn't post any power or anything. But I thought there was it wasn't really representative of my power of what his was um and also they're doing zone one it's how you're like wow you can then calculate his threshold and then figure out his five minute power and see if you're going to beat him or whatever i mean it's like they're just puddling putting along plus they have different aero position and it's it's like a fast climb so anyway i don't know what what um if you have any questions about what the pros are doing i mean five hours at zone one does seem a bit weird but maybe they did some sort of zone one zone two i don't know but it seems like a lot of the pros seem to do spend a lot of time in zone one um, sort of longish rights, which is sort of weird, but maybe that's I don't know why they do that. To be honest, They're, like often when you look on the pro on a pro ride, like it will be really high wattage, so like the weighted normalized power might be like two fifty, two sixty, but when you look at their zone one, like the where their power was, zone one always ends up being massive, um, which is sort of weird. But you can see here Valgren's bike; it doesn't look blue, does it? It sort of just looks black. Um, but yeah, it was it was a nice day. It was chilled out, just right, just going up Norton Summit as you do, and just bumping into some pros, which was sick. Um, I was quite surprised to see them. How lean are they this time of year? Cohen de Court was pretty lean. Not gonna lie, yeah, definitely leaner than me. Um, you could see some good definition on his calf. Valgren, he didn't look super lean. I mean, he's probably a little bit leaner than me, but not not crazy amounts. I mean, I think the thing with the pro riders is that like. They don't stay lean all year round, obviously, because it's just too hard um, for them to stay that lean. But also, they often eat a lot of sort of trash, I think, in the off-season, and they gain quite a lot of weight, and then they have to do all the calorie restriction. It'd be better if they just sort of ate a high-carb vegan diet, and then they just stay lean all year round. Not unhealthily lean, but just decently lean. And then if they want to get super lean, just get rid of the oil. Um, and then they could be really incredibly lean but it also means they wouldn't have this blowout where they need to do loads of base training and loads of training to try and um burn loads of calories and then calorie restrict because they're eating such like bad diets basically during the off season um but i don't know i, I feel like for them some people i think they take tour down under very seriously and i think it's a, a sort of a targeted race 
others I think it's it's more just warming up for the season, get used to racing. Um, I think Valgren's probably pretty serious because he came here quite early on. I'm not sure about Cohen de Court to be honest. He, he's probably just doing a domestic role. But the thing with pros is that they gain their fitness so quickly and they also don't really lose it because they're just so conditioned. Uh, they do 30,000 Ks a year and they've probably been doing that since they're about 17, 18. So, I mean, it's like, it's a lot of, it's a lot of hours on the bike. So that it's not like when they take a month off, they suddenly come back and they're just like really bad. I mean, they might have lost 30, 40 watts, but they'll get that back pretty quickly. So you can see here the watts are, the watts are decent. Like, I'm having to work relatively hard um, to sort of stay on their wheel um, but I think, but I mean, it was just incredible because I could talk, I obviously I could talk at this, this power. Um, but I mean, I couldn't just talk nonstop, like with doing nothing. Like they were literally just chatting away, like talking as if like, they're just like walking along, having a conversation. That's sort of the perceived effort that they, that was the effort they were doing, which is just quite incredible to be honest. Um, and it sort of put into some perspective, like when you think you're fast and then you're like sort of doing zone two, zone three. Um, and they're doing like probably zone one, just chilling. Um, so yeah, we continue on this climb for a bit. Well, the non summit is we've just finished it on the left there and it sort of continues on for a bit, but we're not really, I think, I mean, it just continues on basically like this. They just cruise along. I sit behind them and then I say cheers for the ride at the end. Um, and that's about it to be honest. Um, I mean, their cadence is pretty good. I mean, it's not, it's probably just like 80. I mean, they're not really going hard, so it doesn't really matter what their cadence is that much. They like to get out of the saddle every every so often. You can see if Algren's doing that now, but they they seem so comfortable. They could just, like, do this all day, every day. Um, but, yeah, cheers for watching. If you have any questions about pros, um, and if you want me to ride with any pro riders who are in Tour Down Under, let me know, and I'll try and, try and find them. I might do some interviews or something. It depends. I feel like when it's a team, it's more more acceptable to do, like talk to the riders a bit more. But when it's just them two, going for a ride, it's a bit weird for some randomer to start drilling some questions out of them. But anyway, cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next vid.